Okay, the first thing was we're going to be using this simulation to uh, simulate protein synthesis of this imaginary organism. Uh, the first thing that you're going to be given is DNA. So if I had a random DNA sequence, let's say it was T A C G G G A T A. Okay, those are represented in uh, three sections that we're going to refer to as DNA triplets. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do is the process of what? What is it? Wow, it's, it's almost as if you did this before. Now, uh, yes, when you transcribe this, right? Just leave it on top of there, thanks. When you transcribe this, we're going to be uh, transcribing the DNA into what other molecule? Class? RNA. Yeah, specifically messenger RNA, messenger RNA yeah. So across from T is going to be? A. Across from A is going to be? C is? U. Good. All right, now every three of these, right, represents something called a? Hold on. The DNA ones are actually referred to as triplets. Okay, so the next process, that messenger RNA is going to leave the nucleus and, the, and attach to a ribosome, and we're going to go through what process now? Translation. Yeah, translation. All right, now coming to the ribosome, one codon at a time, is going to be these molecules called? No. Yeah, they are amino acids, but what they're attached to? No. What are they? They're going to form polypeptides. Transfer R and A. Exactly. Yes. Attached to the transfer RNA is an amino acid. And then the anticodon that is on this transfer RNA that is complementary to the codon is going to be? UAC. Exactly. So what we're, draw what we're building here one amino acid at a, time, at a time is a protein. This is going to be, move this down a little bit. Uh, this is going to be building a polypeptide chain of what? Amino acids. You guys are so smart. I taught you so well. You think no. It's my pleasure. I would never rather, I would never want to rather be working at Applebee's. The next transfer RNA in the next spot of the ribosome with the anticodon of has another amino acid. I don't know exactly. I think, I don't know what CCC is, maybe proline. Now, a bond is going to form between these amino acids. This bond is going to be what bond? Uh, a peptide bond. If you have many peptide bonds, you have a polypeptide. Yes. Now, this transfer RNA, it's going to shift over. The ribosome is going to shift to the next codon. This transfer RNA guy takes off, leaving behind his amino acid. And then we have another transfer RNA, which correlates with this codon. It's going to be A. A. And he's going to have another amino acid. And then we're going to have what happened between these amino acids? Oh, they're going to combine. Yeah, what bond is this called? It's a peptide bond. More than one peptide bond would be a polypeptide. So this guy is going to leave, right? And then we'll continue on until we reach a stop codon, right? And what we end up building is this chain of amino acids, right, okay, which is a protein. And it's going to fold up, right? So if you have many amino acids together, it's eventually going to, like, fold up and form some sort of shape, some three-dimensional shape. And the shape of the protein determines uh, the trait that it controls. Now, let's see what we're going to do. Well, I'm going to do the first gene for you, gene A, right? And the first process that we're going to do is transcription. And so I'm going to look at my DNA triplets right here, and there's three of them, ACC, GGT, and TT, uh, TAT. And I'm going to transcribe them into a messenger RNA. Across from A is? 
G G crowd G G T is T A T is A U A for the four people that are paying attention. Good. Now, yes. The next process. Now that message RNA is going to leave the nucleus. It's going to attach to a ribosome, either bound on the uh, roughy R or floating in the cytoplasm. And we're going to go through what process? Translation. Translation. I'm going to translate the message into a protein. Now, we're going to read this one codon at a time and bringing over each amino acid. One amino acid is the transfer RNA, and it knows which amino acid to bring because it has an anti-codon that matches with the codon. And in this case, it's what, class? A, C, C, U, A, U. U, A, U. Very good, very good. Now, how do I know what's attached to each transfer RNA? Well, this simulation does not use a codon chart, it just has a bunch of DNA triplets, okay, right here. So these are going to be representing the anti-codons. And then it's going to tell you the amino acid number. Since there's 20 different amino acids, uh, the numbers are going to be from 1 to 20. And so instead of writing the abbreviation of the amino acid, like uh, let's say this is glycine, this is leucine, this is alanine, whatever, the fourth amino acid, uh, methionine or something like that. Instead of doing that, they're just going to associate each of the amino acids with the number. Okay. So you're going to go and then look at the transfer RNAs and figure out, okay, the first anticodon was ACC. I look up here that the amino acid attached to that transfer RNA molecule is the 20th amino acid. And so you're going to come down here, and the first amino acid in the, in the polypeptide chain is the 20th one. Then you're going to go to the next transfer RNA molecule, GGU. F look up at the chart, right? You're going to look up at the chart right here. Right here's GGU right here. That's going to be the 12th amino acid in the amino acid sequence. And then the last one, class... UAU, right up here. That's going to be the 13th amino acid. Okay, now that I have this tiny little polypeptide chain here of 20, 12, 13, this is this tiny little uh, protein. Uh, this is not exactly the way it would be in a real cell because they usually have over 100 amino acids, uh, depending on the protein, depending on the gene, that control our traits. And so 20... 12, 13 is right here, which that protein, its trait uh, causes that organism to be hairy. That's the phenotype, right? The DNA and its sequence is the genotype. And what it controls is the phenotype, right? And this guy is going to be hairy. So that's what gene A controls. It's the gene that controls hair, whether it's hairless or hairy. And so then you're going to go, and the next part is you're going to draw, sorry. You're going to draw, right, your guy, and you're going to make him hairy. Got it? And then you're going to do that with gene B, gene C, gene D, gene E, and gene F, okay? Okay until you have your final organism and his or her six traits.